This is video two of the Instagram Masterclass. In this video, we're gonna talk about influencers, collaborations, and brand partnerships. Before I start talking about that, just a little bit of a preface for you. We're talking about influencers, collaborations, and brand partnerships now, because these are things that I want you to be thinking about as we begin to design, create, and really strategize your Instagram. What kind of partnerships can you create with the people that you already know, or with people who are like-minded individuals that you wanna bring in to your Instagram account? So what is an influencer and why should you as a brand be utilizing influencers? Well, there are a couple different kinds of influencers that you need to know about. The first one being the macro influencer. A macro influencer, according to the mother of marketing, is someone who has hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of followers on Instagram. These people have such a huge, tight knit, highly engaged community that going with a macro influencer is really going to help elevate your brand and its influence on the people you're trying to reach in addition to helping target more people for your brand's product. The one thing you need to know about macro influencers though, they do expect you to pay them. You should not, and I never wanna hear about anybody going to a macro influencer and offering them nothing but a free product and expect them to be okay with that. Macro influencers range in cost. So if you're gonna go after a whale, you need to make sure that you're capable of paying that whale's cost. Sometimes these macro influencers can charge hundreds of thousands of dollars for an Instagram influencer based post, or even just some kind of sponsored partnership with them. So you need to make sure that you are clearly outlining what you would like from this person and what you're willing to give them, as well as any benefits that might be able to hook on underneath the offer that you're giving them. Other than macro influencers, there are other kinds of influencers that your brand can go after as well. Those would be the micro and the mini influencers. A micro influencer typically has up to 14,000 followers, maybe a little bit more than a macro influencer has. And when it comes to a mini influencer, you're talking more under 10,000 followers. But that doesn't mean that you should be discounting the validity of a micro versus a mini versus a macro influencer, because the main thing you want to be going after is the number of people that are actively engaging with each influencer's posts. That's where you're really gonna find the biggest bang for your buck. So. When you're going to make a proposal for an influencer to share your Etsy craft or to do some kind of brand collaboration with you, look at their engagement rate. The best rule of thumb is to see if each influencer's posts have about 3% engagement rate according to how many followers they have versus how many likes or comments they may have on an individual post. There are going to be some influencers that might be sharing something that's a little more personal on their account. So try to stay away from the influencer posts that have that really personal touch to them because maybe that's not the kind of audience you wanna be going after. Someone that has a little bit more of a commercial vibe to their Instagram account is typically the kind of influencer you wanna go after. A really great account example would be Raising Little Dragons. She has this really great Instagram account where she talks about her life as an educator and a mom, but a lot of her posts involve product placement and a couple of other things that she tends to share within each of her posts. Other than working with influencers, you can do a collaboration. Typically collaborations don't really have to cost any money. A great example of a collaboration that would work without having to spend a lot of money is if you're trying to target podcasters. So let's say you are a company selling microphones and you wanna partner with a company that has computers. A podcaster typically needs a microphone and a computer to function. And being that they want to sell more computers and you want to sell more microphones, it's a great partnership. So collaborating, the two of you would come together and you could trade Instagram profiles for the day. You could do an Instagram takeover, which is what swapping profiles usually means. Or you could simply say, here, I have a set of posts I'd like you to share over the next 30 to 60 days. And I would like for you to send me posts that I can share over the next 30 to 60 days. Then you don't have to use hashtag sponsored or hashtag ad because it's a collaboration and you're just swapping content with each other. Tagging and commenting on each other's posts is also going to be something that you wanna make sure that you involve in that collaboration. 
Outside of influencers and collaborations, there's also brand partnerships. This is where you go after those really specific influencers that you really want them to have a more long-term partnership with. A great example is that if you are a personal finance blogger and you're really trying to amp up your Instagram account and start working with bigger, better brands like maybe Chase Bank or Wells Fargo or Southwest Credit Cards, a great thing to do is to propose to the these larger brands, what kind of partnership you'd like to have with them, talking about maybe the credit card specifically, or maybe a partnership idea would be you're doing a video series for them on the importance of budgeting and how important it is to utilize Zelly from Chase, or you can utilize something like a free checking account or why a business checking account is important too. Whatever direction you wanna take with that brand partnership, the key detail is that you need to make sure that it has everything to do with who you are as a brand and what your ultimate mission as a brand is. So you may be thinking, all right, influencer, collaboration, brand partnership, those seem doable. I can definitely do those things. Not easy, definitely doable. But how do I go about doing those things and make them successful? You need to have a defined brand. So that brings us to our next video. We're going to dive into what makes a brand successful and how to begin defining your brand through some of the worksheets and the workbook that you should have received in an email from yours truly. And if you have any questions or need that workbook resent to you, please make sure that you take the time now to go ahead and do that. I'll see you in the next clip.